Hi, welcome back. This is Rashid and uh, this is second week of the 12 week STS series. And as I said before, uh, every week, um, the first video I'm going to break, bring to general public and then followed by one or two videos which are going to be for the members only. Membership is very reasonable. For example, if you are in the United States, it's uh, $2.99 a month. And if you're in India, it is 89 Indian rupees per month. Okay, so let's get started. Physical, what we're going to do, what we are going to look into today is the physical design flow, different stages, and where STA or static timing analysis fits in that picture. So let's start with very high level. Okay, this is the PCB. And uh, on that PCB, we had different dyes. So if you look at, oops, sorry. Uh, if you look at this one here, so you have a dye here, right? From the dye, it's a, this is a QFP package and you see the wire bonds coming outside into the PCB, that connection. And this is the lid which encapsulate the dye. All right, so you see different dyes and this is a pretty nice picture um, of that package you see the diff dye your core area and from the core area you have pads there and from the pad these uh, gold wire bonds coming to, um, to the package and to the pcb so a practical chip that i took from here uh, they did it on 65 nanometer and you see here uh, on this dye you have pads along the outer side and inside you have a core which is here and these pads are signal pads these are ground vcc all kinds of those and this is they took a picture of the dye inside the package and uh, the wire bonding going outside again it's a qfp wire bond package so higher level when you start let's say this is all the logic we have Okay, you have, uh, as I said, signal pads, you can have VDD, VSS, and I'm just showing three of those types on each side. Uh, you will have a lot more depending upon what different signals you have. But uh, if you look at the VDD, VSS comes here, um, and it gets, uh, there is a power strap ring around. Uh, so the first connection, so one of the ring is for VDD. Uh, outside, then inside you come here. For VSS, the inner ring, and then, then you have a whole power grid here for different metals. Starting, let's say this is metal four and your connection with sense cells are metal ones and you have alternate grids here so that you have a very reliable power delivery to your core area. All right, so now let's say where you start, you have an RTL for this entire design. So you have these pads inside your RTL, you have these connections. For the pads you have uh, these pads come from the uh, cells provided by the fab then all the center cells come from the um, from the fab and then you have memories there which also come from a vendor okay so you have all those three things as macros in your design and that's and your rtl has uh, instances for different things and uh, module decoration for different things. The very first thing you start with, so RTL comes in, and the very first stage is what I call, or what we call design planning. So design planning, you generate quick uh, synthesis, this, um, just a netlist, so it doesn't have to be optimized version, doesn't need to have a proper consensus and everything. So you have that netlist, and you pull it in floor plan, and in floor plan, this is where you create all these location of the pads, you create this power grid and if you have to place macros for example i see macros here uh, on a certain space and these are all the standard cells i can see there and they have all that connection so you have the net list for everything and then you carry out all this floor planning right so once i have this picture here over here so once you have your floor planning done uh, then you do next stage is do a full synthesis optimize synthesis 
uh, you just don't want to have just a netlist, but a netlist that meets the constraints that you gave it. You can have the timing constraints are the most important one, but you also have a floor plan constraints, right? You have a certain area within which you need to place everything. Then you have power constraints. So given those constraints and in ProtRTL and your standard set libraries, your macro libraries and all those come and eventual result is you have a very optimized netlist. Okay, by the way, I have a separate series uh, on RTL to routing where I take an RTL and I give you detailed flow steps and a higher level overview of each step. And that series has about 28 videos. So you can watch that if you want to go into detail of every step. But anyway, after synthesis, you go into placement. In the placement, you what you do is if you look at here, uh, your design have standard cell rows. So these rows you see there, and they have a fixed height, but they use the cells can have a variable width. So all your cells, which came from synthesis, your netlist needs to be placed within those rows. I mean, my this hand drawn picture, you can see that they're not exactly on the on the rows, but they're pretty much on the on the rows. If you look at the little bit um, a zoom out picture. All right. So this is called a legalized placement. So output of placement is an optimized legalized placement of all your standard cells, as well as macro needs to be placed properly. And after that here comes a CTS, which is clock tree synthesis. Your clock comes here. I'm just showing it for one of the flip flop, but it needs to go here. It needs to cover a distance. So in order to have a good transition times here, you need to put repeaters on it or you, what you say, clock tree on it. Similarly, if you have another flip-flop, you need to have repeater builder. So you need to have a proper edge tree, for example, in order to have a similar arrival time for the clocks here and there or any other flip-flop. So after CTS, now you have clock tree buffers to each flip-flop or each um, wherever clock needs to go to the final sequential cells. Okay, routing you see there, now all your nets have a proper matters assigned. For example, you see here, if you, with comparison, kind of, I'm kind of showing here, you have a logical connection, right? You, you don't have any actual routes here, but now you can see here the output of this cell. Now, um, I'm showing red is one metal horizontal and green is vertical, and these blue things are what? Vs, yes. Um, so now you have proper metals between every cell. That's what I'm trying to show here. All right, so that, that is the uh, your synthesis, placement, CTS routing, and then another important one is the fill one. So um, you don't have these connections all over the place, but in, um, at the end you put some dummy cells, dummy metals, uh, you don't connect them anything, uh, but those will be there in order to give strength to your die and also to meet uh, design rule constraints. But when that thing is done, um, the output will be a GDS and that will be sent to the fab that has all the metals vias all the connection or everything in all the details here all right so while you do go through the implementation stage you check different things in each after each stage but there is also a sign of verification on your final netlist I should have maybe put these ones connected here because this is your final final checking right so the most critical one if you look at is the first one the equivalence check so you want to make sure that when synthesis synthesize it this netlist is logically equivalent to this article that came in means on every node uh, if you start with certain pattern on the input side uh, the same zero ones logically present in RTL on every node should be the same case for output synthesis and once i mean this is where major um, uh, major what you say conversion happened from our deal right so you check this one but of course finally be this final one that you really check with respect to this one too okay layout is drs design rule constraints then those come from the fab side within drcs or you have a general drc you have a layout versus schematic and you, I have a density. Those are typically the major three categories. Timing, yeah, that is the topic of this series. So we will look into detail what we do there. And reliability, IR drop on your power side. And then you want to make sure that the current through the metals as well as especially through the vias is not exceeding the limit of what those 
objects can stand if if that happens you will have open shards over time so those are the most important critical sign of verification that you do on this netlist okay so hopefully you got an idea of overall physical design now question is where what what is first thing is or what is sda what are the typical inputs to static timing analysis and what's the output output i'm sure you you have guessed it by now so input is netlist i mentioned already so you have this final route let's say after route we want to do an sd analysis i'm, I'm just skipping that um uh, fill stage okay let's say route is our final stage everything is routed now what we don't want to do netlist netlist is the interconnection of all the standard southern macros and then the other thing is spef that is where all those wires they have resistance and capacitance on each of the nodes that is what that contains so you get that from a sign of extraction tools um, uh, that you run um, on this database so once you run that you get spec file netlist from the uh, routing stage you have then you get the, all the the timing constraint because you need to verify clock definition clock exception input output constraints and of course transfer libraries micro libraries when all this given to this timing analysis tool so timing analysis tool is going to create um, um, propagate delays through your entire stage uh, through every node starting from input and to the output through every node it will make transition and um, only the those node which remain static like always tied to zero and one is not going to change those but on every other node is going to make all kind of possible zero to one transition and one to zero transition and the core job of the STA tool is to calculate setup and hold time on all those sequential input stay, um, pins or what we call them endpoints which we're going to later define and the, to tell us if it's a violation there or not okay so where sta comes in this stage so so sign of sta it comes after routing here yeah. or only after your fail the, the database that you really want to send to the fab that's where you do SDA. So what you do is you run SDA assign of extraction and then uh, you perform um, SDA. But within each stage, you also do an SDA. So for example, within synthesis, you can do uh, timing analysis. So each of these stages that the tool has an SDA engine built into that. So you don't need to set up a separate flow. But within that, when you give timing constraint, it has everything. Once you do a report timing, it's going to show you your timing paths, each, each one. But these are not sign of SDA. This is sign of SDA. So why this is not sign off? Because of two, for, for each of these, there's two reasons. One is the database is not sign off. The other thing is the SDA engine itself doesn't have that much accuracy as the sign off. Here you run it. Um, and uh, it will bring more accuracy plus partially because of the inside of the tool i believe it's the, the core engine is not as up to date as this one uh, the other one is also generally what you will see i um, mean we won't be able to know inside the tool but what we will see will be the the, the database uh, the information inside the database is not sign off for example synthesis you have the syn and netlist Okay, pretty close to the final one, but you don't have any wires. Um, and uh, so wires are being estimated. Same thing at placement stage. Now you have a final uh, netlist, but you don't have any wire. And by in these two stages, you don't have a clock tree synthesis uh, cells, right? In CTS, what you're missing is routing for your signal rights. And in routing, what you have inside actual routes, but your extraction is not sign off. Your R and Cs are a little bit pessimistic um, a little bit more than what you would get here so that all those things are not sign off and that's where typically people do a correlation what is the sda violation count or magnitude here and compares to this one because inside the tool when tool is fixing those violations you want to see a kind of a, a similar picture here 
but generally you will get a little bit pessimistic picture so once people if if, if you have certain violations here you don't want to stay forever there go to your sign up sd and see if you still have violations or not all right that's it for this video hopefully you got a better idea of it if you have any questions please um uh, ask them in the comments and i will get to those as soon as possible all right thank you so much take care